opportunities um, for a moment to share my love for business. Uh, I can safely say but a business is in my blood, it's in my DNA. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about who I am just now. But the, this morning, I want to really invite you guys to use this and look at this as a coaching experience. And, and why do I say that? Because, you know, I, I could stand here and I can share theoretical ideas about leadership, but I thought to do it and, and make it real. I want you guys to use the chat box and um, drop some comments, uh, ask some questions. And, and let's make this a shared learning experience, shall we? Um, I'm also going to run you through what I believe to be the most important principles in leadership, and I call them my four eyes. And then I thought to share some idea, uh, well, I'll, I'm, I'm going to use what, I, what I'm going to teach you, um, and I'm going to explain that with a case study of a business client that I have had the privilege to coach since end of 2020, and I'm still coaching, just to explain and guys how leadership really comes to its best in business once we dare to lead so um, let's kick off so again this is an interactive conversation once we're done I'm gonna leave the floor and I'll be in lounge one up till about quarter past 11 I've got a diff uh, another appointment after this so I'll have to leave you guys at quarter past 11 but I'm sure that has some lovely opportunity to meet maybe in person in lounge one uh, stick around and let's have fun shall we so show me thumbs up are we ready to have some fun and um, yeah let's go so i absolutely believe that we all have got the inner ability to lead i mean it's in our dna you know the human we as humans have survived for centuries and centuries and the only way that we could have survived is because we lead and we lead well to start off ourselves so but here's the thing we all get to choose at some stage you know how invested we are going to become or want to be in our own sense of leadership or leadership of self and therefore leadership of others so although i suppose i can fill this room with all the books and content that's ever been written about leadership for me, leadership is a very, very personal journey. And at some stage, I spoke about choice and up to a point where you've got to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, do I dare? And that's a question that we all get to ask ourselves at some point and that we also get to answer at some point. So to kick us off, I just wanted to give you a little bit of insight in who I am because I do I need to just explain whether I believe I've got the I've earned the right to share this platform with you guys. So um, Leanne is, is handling my presentation. So Leanne, can we go over to the next slide, please? So guys, there's just a little bit of a glimpse in terms of who I am. I come from a entrepreneur's home. My dad in my matric year decided that he wants to work for himself. He resigned and off he went and he started his own business. That set, that set everything in motion for me. So my dad was very much my role model in terms of um, taking self-leadership and responsibility and ownership and then deciding that he would want to be uh, the captain of his own ship. So he started a business and I had the after graduation, graduating from varsity, I joined my dad in sales and marketing uh, and selling welding machines, can you believe it? But the point is, again, you know, it's the choices we make. And then uh, that was about 14 years or 15 years. And then I decided to open my own guest house. So that was my first stint at having my own business. I still have my guest house. And then we moved down to the Western Cape. And this is where I pursued my next um, calling, shall we say. Um, I had a brief stint as a business broker, valuing businesses and helping business owners establish value of their business. And then I stumbled really onto Action Coach, which is the world's number one business leading, business coaching, uh, franchise driven company in the world. And, I, and I'm so privileged to say that I've got the opportunity for the past six years 
to be a full-time a business coach so why is this important because i just wanted to say you know what uh, our life takes uh, takes a direction and it's for us to decide whether we want to be in control of our journey uh, or are we just going to drift along and see what happens so as you can see i'm very much a proactive person and i like the idea that i am in charge so uh, I've got to be congruent. So I also have got a coach because I absolutely believe in the power of coaching. And why do I say that? So what does a coach do? A coach is there to perfect your swing. A coach is there to be honest in terms of the gaps um, when we execute. A coach is holding up the mirror and challenges us in terms of some of the truths and the half truths that we get to tell ourselves. So I believe in the power of coaching um, in South Africa it's been a relatively new concept but and um, business owners are catching on to it and I just want to plant the seed that you know what we all need a coach and why wait until your business is in such dire um, position that it's almost like in emergency room so get a coach sooner than later you'll be amazed as the difference that coaching can make in your life so um, at the bottom left, you'll see my purpose. So this is my coach challenging me and said, okay, so Coach Lindy, what's your purpose? What's your calling? What's your vision for your life? And yes, like that, I struggle with that. But um, yeah, eventually, by the grace of God, I was able to put that in words. And I, this is what I live for. I live to lead with significance. So who do I lead? I lead myself. I lead my clients my family I need you know I believe that I am making a difference so for me uh, it's not just about leading but to lead in a way that it's significant and it makes a difference the second thing that I hold very dear is I believe that I have been called to do what I'm doing currently so the second one is to serve with gratitude and then lastly to never ever forget that everything is just a grace and um, you know to remind myself that I should be having and, and, and just be very aware of moments of joy. So what is moments of joy is when I get some breakthroughs with my clients, you know, I do, hey coach high five. So to live with joy and I think um, other than happiness, happiness is um, um, you know, I will be happy if joy is just in the moment. So thank you, Leanne. I think that's me in who I am. And I, I truly believe I'm living my purpose every day. So to kick us off, this is for me the beginning. And it's, it's making the choice because the very first person we get to lead is ourselves. And, and, and you know, we've got to do this effectively with self-discipline. And I truly believe that we only when we are congruent in leading from the front by way of example, um, do we become effective leaders. And I don't know, thumbs up if you if you agree. So it does become with the with am willing to lead myself with discipline. Next, Liat. So to kick us off, I'd like to share my thoughts around leadership and for and I came up with a framework and I call it the four eyes. Uh, thanks, Leanne. So the four eyes of leadership for me is we we have to lead with intent. Our leadership must be inspiring or inspirational. We should have an influence because of our leadership and lastly got to be impactful so you know just i just like to make things easy so those are my four eyes and i'd like to spend i'm just looking briefly at each one of them and how that looks and play out in the place of business next Leah. okay so let's kick off intent what do I mean with intent? Now, synonyms for intent is to do something on purpose, to be deliberate, uh, have a plan, be proactive, and be visionary. 
So I don't know if you've heard the saying, the best way to predict our future is to actually create it. And, but this means that we've actually, in the craziness of life, got to spend some time to go quiet and really ask ourselves, so what do I think is my purpose in life? And then secondly, if I have a business, so how does my business serve my purpose? So you can already see I'm talking about being intentional as a person and therefore a leader, but then also being intentional in terms of being a business owner. Because your business is the vehicle that's got to serve you being the person in the driving seat. Intent needs to be penned down to some sort of strategic plan. And I don't care if you take a cokey and you write it against your wall or on, on a mirror in your bathroom uh, or on a piece of paper or on an A1 carton. But take some time and pen out the strategic plan for your life and your business. One of the most amazing books written on this is a book that I think is probably one of the most important books on self-leadership and leadership in general that's ever been written. And it's called uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Thumbs up if you've read the book. Let me see who's read the book. Read it, please grab a copy. It's on Audible. There's lots and lots of YouTube. There we go, Tristan, um, Murani, uh, Daryl, fantastic. Those of you that haven't read it, grab a book. It's absolutely worth the read. So Stephen Covey says um, the first three habits of highly effective people is first of all, be proactive. Understand that you can create your future. Uh, you can predict your future, sorry, by creating it. It means to be proactive. Understand that you are in the driving seat. And if it, you know those, that cheesy cliche that says, if it's to be, it's up to me. Well, that's the point. So habit number one, be proactive. Habit number two, start with the end in mind. And that is will be what intent is. It's the purpose that fuels the passion. Because let's be honest, you know, life is full of challenges. And in business, absolutely, business is a reflection of life. Things don't always go exactly the way that we intended. But if we have got a very clear purpose, that does help to feel our passion and the passion helps us to overcome those obstacles that we from time to time experience in business. So what is the spin-off of, of having a very clear defined plan or intent for the future? Well, I'm sure you'll agree with me that it's actually quite obvious. Um, the spin-off is because it gives hope. It gives me hope and it gives hope to my team. There's definitely a better alignment between my team and myself because now I've clarified how I see our ideal future and people can resonate with it. My team can ask me questions. They can ask themselves, listen, do I agree? Is this something that I can get excited about? Is this something that I want to yay, jump out of bed in the morning and rush over to work to give my best? So it's absolutely critical for alignment. Um, and I think also, you know, the clarity brings the focus and other way around. The focus brings the clarity. But let us say that it starts with a very clear intent and purpose. So the question I want to ask you is, are you at this stage clear? Uh, pre uh, creating purposefully for the future. How do we need to do this? Well, as I've alluded to it, create some blank space, block out the day in your diary or take a whole weekend and just go into thinking mode. What's your journey been up to now? One tip that I want to um, you to to you, or one tip I want to give you is to do a SWOT analysis on yourself. So take the time, take the space, and do a SWOT analysis on yourself and your journey and your business up till now. So what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? But then more importantly, what are those opportunities that I need to see, be aware of, and then construct a plan in order for me to achieve those outcomes. 
So how often do I need to do this? Well, you know what, as often as you can, but here is the frequency. You've got to at least once a year, look at your life plan, business plan. Then we need to year, either by months or quarterly, we've got to go back to our plan and, and compare with the results and, um, you know, and see, you know, are we on track? So every quarter or six months, you would want to review your results in terms of your plan. And then that gives us our month by month focus and then our week to week um, clarity around our to do list. So the bigger picture gets broken down in outcomes. Outcomes then gets drilled down into very specific goals and plans, and then the to-do list that we get to focus on on a week-to-week, month-to-month basis. I'm just keeping my eye on the chat. I just want to make sure that there's um, no questions or comments. Any cost questions or comments so far, guys? At the end, so by the way, keep a pen and paper ready because I'm going to ask you for your biggest takeaway. What's been something that you are taking away? Firstly, that's been an amazing insight for you. And secondly, that you promised me that you will go and try and implement going forward as a result of what I'm sharing with you. Okay, so that's intent. I've, so for me, leadership starts with self-leadership and a very clear purpose and a desire for a specific future. Next, thank you. Right, the second eye of leadership, inspiration. So what are synonyms with inspiration? Inspire, that is when we, we in, uh, the, inspire is to fill someone with the urge to do something. It's, it's the motivation, it's the encouragement, it's the persuasion. Someone gets to do something out of their free will. Now, in my eyes, natural leaders are curious about the potential effect that we can have on others. We've got to be very authentic, we've got to be very real. And for me, inspire, it's almost like that rocket on that snail's little uh, doppy. It's the energy, it's that off we go. So for me, inspire is all about energy. So you would want to ask yourself, how do I make others feel around me with, with the fear involved? How do, I, how do they feel? Are they energized? Are they excited? What is the level of energy? Um, and so how do we then get to do this in real terms in business? Well, quite frankly, you've got to engage in your team around you. Be transparent. Have opportunities of real conversation, communicating. Um, one of the things, the tips that I give here is to be in a day, have, have a routine of every morning, starting with your morning huddle, each having a cup of coffee, around the kettle and okay so everyone tell me what are you on about what is your focus today what would you want to achieve today how can i help you next say Cara, what is your day looking like today what do you want to achieve uh, what do you want the outcome to be today how can i help you so to inspire means to be absolutely invested in your team every day, almost every minute, to be wide awake and aware in terms of what's going on, what are they focusing on, what are they struggling with, looking at the levels of energy. Even my PA admin lady that works with me, um, you know, I ask her to death, okay, so Ansi, what are you busy with? Uh, anything that I can help you with? Uh, what is the outcomes that you want for today? So the how is definitely to be authentic and real. Dare I say, in order to inspire, we need to also show our own humanness. You know, um, we're not perfect. And, you know, I believe that we get to inspire others if we are completely transparent and vulnerable, especially also in those times when I'm struggling as a leader and a business owner. To be, to be open with things like, I really need your help. Can you guys come through for me? It's been a tough week. So how are we going to together 
get ourselves through whatever it is uh, the challenge that we are facing so to be open to be bonded I think also, you know, I can only inspire people if I believe in myself. Secondly, I can only inspire my clients, my suppliers, my team, if I have got a steadfast belief in my product, in my business, in what I get to do. Because if you don't believe in that, who else is going to believe in it? So you can see inspires all about the emotion, the energy. And it comes down to the passion and the belief and the steadfast holding on to what we are busy with doing. And, and again, that comes back to the purpose of your business. A brilliant book that you guys can uh, read on this is uh, a book by Daniel Pink. It's called Drive. A brilliant book around passion, authority, master, mastery, and how we all are motivated by different things in the in the in the in the in the environment where we get to work today. So uh, a brilliant book. But I will be sharing a book list at the end of the presentation in terms of suggested readings that I think you guys will find very valuable. Next. Right, the third eye of leadership, definitely influence. Can you see those little paper bollikies? It looks like a bit of a mess. And then eventually, five, four, three, two, one, this person launch into the future, um, being able to take off. And that's for me influence. It's the capacity to have an effect on character and development behavior of other people influence is slightly different from inspire inspire is in the moment the energy the passion influence for me is the long-term sustainable impact that we get to have leaders and for, for me this is the development of people to see people launch to see your staff excelling to see them developing to their levels of potential I often see um, business owners out there struggling because they have not had, they don't have the confidence in themselves. They sometimes feel a little bit intimidated by the world and business and everything happening around them. And then what they tend to do is when they get to a point and recruit team um, and staff, they're looking for those that know less than them. That um, you know, it's like they don't want to be intimidated by some high impact um, team members or individuals. So they tend to put together a team that they're comfortable with. So obviously the challenge in that is your team, they never get to inspire you. So I absolutely believe that good leaders understand the power in developing others. Um, you know, Maxwell says it's so great that he says that great leaders understand that leadership is about raising others to their potential. Even if this means that individuals can surpass you in terms of knowledge and skill, experience. But that is still fantastic. So think about it. If you can surround yourself with a team of people that is you, that gives you the energy, that's creative, that's proactive, you know, it's like they're living their dream, they're living their potential. And I know this sounds maybe a little bit theoretical, but I will explain to you in my case study how this really played out in front of my eyes in one of my coaching clients. It is real. So influence for me is the question that you've got to ask yourself, who do they become as a result of my leadership? I want to say this again. Who do they, meaning your team, become as a result of your leadership? So how do we get to do this? How do we influence? I think it comes back to the one-on-one the, the -on -one interaction and the time and the investment in your specific um, members of your team. It's about giving recognition. It's about listening. It's about um, asking questions. It's about 
truly wanting to understand who they are and what are some of their aspirations. I see Anne saying, this is so true. And, um, and I think, you know, um, you know, the moment you pick up a disconnect or someone that's almost like offbeat, um, this is of you to be in order to recognize and see that immediately and jump on it and say, hey, uh, Samuel, I see things are off a little bit. Uh, what's the problem? Let's talk about this. So you've got to create the, the freedom and the time to have these really personal um, um, really invested um, relationships with the, those that you lead. If you do this, you become an influential leader. The result in terms of your business, without a doubt, I can guarantee you, you will be building a successful, profitable business that will work without you, which means the, the result of the business is not dependent on your effort and your effort alone, uh, but is the result of an empowered, engaged team of individuals that's happy, that's proactive, that's um, really developing to their utmost potential. And I mean, what is a bigger compliment than that? Got to ask you. So uh, next, uh, let's go on to the final I of, of leadership. And the final I of leadership is impact. So here we are, um, you see yourself as a leader that's intentional. Um, you get it right to be inspirational. There's definite signs of being influential in terms of long-term change of direction, change of um, behavior, development of potential. But the real one would be, can I see the impact of my leadership? So what is impact? A synonym for impact is the effect of. It's the difference that I get to make. It is the, the results, the adding value, the creating value. So impact is tangible, it's visible, and it's real. And I think that's the acid test. Uh, in terms of leadership, can I really say that because of me and my leadership, I get to see a real difference? In the world of business, we can look at financial results. So you can draw up your Excel spreadsheet, or you can look at your SAGE or your zero reporting, and you take your periods and you can actually measure to see whether your leadership is affecting in results in your business. What's happening with my net before tax? Uh, are we improving? Is my percentages improving? What's happening to sales? Um, what's happening, you know, how's our gross profit looking like? And more importantly, your balance sheet, which gives us an indication of the difference between assets and, and, and liabilities. So are you growing your personal as well as your business balance sheet? So the impact of leadership is absolutely measurable and it's reflected in the results of your business. Uh, some non-financial results or impact can be um, change of behavior, like I've said, um, you know, self-development, um, uh, things like social impact, um, the, the difference you are making in your community, how many lives you are changing as a result, how many um, employment opportunities are you creating as a result, uh, and, and it's really making a real difference. And that's, we get to, um, uh, you know, really take ownership of our social responsibility. Some questions that we want to ask in terms of impact is, you know, um, like I've said, are we moving forward? On a different note, in a personal way, you know, it's just to ask ourselves, what is the legacy that I'm building as a business owner and a leader? What I'm going to leave behind? What would be the thing people will say at my funeral in my obituary? Um, lies Lindy. She was a person of. Here lies Lindy. She managed to. Uh, here lies Lindy as a result of. So what are the things that people will say about me when I'm gone? So what are those, what is the impact 
and the legacy that we are building and how impactful are we as leaders and what is the footprint that we get to leave behind. How do we measure, um, how can we measure the impact of leadership in terms of business? So tips is like creating dashboards, um, having KPIs. Uh, KPI is a key performance indicator. Um, so I'm going to set target, I want to review. I want to see are we falling short so it's to define kpis and measuring performance and the results uh, thereof the most important thing about uh, measuring impact is to make sure that we do this in a continuous way so to get into a mojo of continuously looking and reviewing and and giving ourselves an opportunity to correct our direction or do things in a different way if we're not seeing the results intended so there we go. Those are my four eyes. I'd like to just now um, give you a real example of a coaching client of mine. So next. For obvious reasons, um, this is a true story and I call it Leadership Unplugged. And uh, for obvious reasons, I don't want to say who they are. I want to protect their um, identity. Um, but I, this, everything that I'm going to share with you is absolutely real in terms of the effect of leadership and how that has changed uh, the way my clients do business. So, uh, at the end of 2020, a very different year, a uh, very difficult and challenging year for many of us, I was approached by two young engineers. They've been in business at that stage for four to five years, had been to build a profitable business. They are in the design and the manufacturing of a high performance sports apparel. They have been profitable, like I say, up till that point, they, um, I think they had a team of about five people and they managed to really grow their business despite COVID and all the challenges that we had at that stage. Um, and I think they were, many of us and they were exactly in the right place at the right time because can you remember during COVID we all went into this fitness spin where you know yoga in our lunch and you know jogging around the house uh, and, and, and I think there's an overall global awareness around fitness and having an active lifestyle so they've got a perfect product that fits this whole growing awareness but none of this, they, you know, they, they came to me and they said, okay, coach, um, you know, we want to grow as leaders because we believe that will have a real impact on being able to grow the business. And then secondly, they said, you know, we would want to be a little bit more, um, we would want to have more confidence in our ability to lead our business. We agreed on a one-to-one uh, -one weekly coaching agreement, and that's it. Um, um, we started coaching and doing the real work. So immediately, the very first thing we did is I spent some time with the two of them, and I said, explain to me your journey up till now. And, and what I wanted and was looking from the, for them to do was to define their purpose. And I said to them, so tell me what's your purpose? What is your vision for this company going forward? What is it that you would like to see? What's important for you in terms of values? And I'll explain the relevance of that just now. And they came up with a vision and I thought, gosh, that's so ambitious. And they said their vision is to become the world's leading, preferred leading choice of high performance apparel. And I thought, wow, that is such an amazing vision. And I asked them, so why is that important? They said, because they absolutely believe that every person on earth needs to enjoy the fruit of having an active lifestyle, and you can do this in a fashionable way. And I thought, you know what, that's actually quite inspirational. Um, I also challenged them on what are some important values that that you guys hold to be true. And the reason why I ask that is because everything back to the values that is that we feel is important in terms of our day to day um, managing our business. And it becomes important because it shows the way 
in, when we make decisions around team, uh, when we are looking to recruit new people, um, you know, so it is, it becomes our way, the fundamental things that we hold to be important and our values. So we spend some time thinking about the values uh, of their business. And they came up with things like um, energy, being creative, um, being a person, a positive person, um, always pushing the bar. They would like to surround themselves with others that, that's invested in self-development. So they came up with a whole string of um, a, 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 like a handful of values that they felt was very, very important. Straight after that, I, I suggested that they have a open conversation with their team around uh, their vision and their values. And that's always the test. Can I stand up in front of my team and can I explain my vision in such a way that I see them catching on and being inspired? And can I see that they now get to believe in what we are trying to build here? That went fantastic and I could see they stood there with confidence and they could explain themselves and they could explain their vision. And it was actually fantastic to see the engagement and how their team got um, the overall buy-in from the team in terms of what they were trying to do. Of course, uh, they left us with some gaps in the team and they immediately realized that in order for them to move forward, they needed to in appointing and recruiting some high impact team players. Initially, when I first saw them, they were very hesitant, they felt threatened, they were thinking unsure, and what if I don't have all the answers? What if um, you know they expect certain things of me which I don't know? Um, and, and just felt, oh, I don't know if I'm comfortable with it. I said, guys, you're never gonna grow unless you're gonna invest in some really high impact team and then they they followed the advice of their coach and they recruited some high impact individuals they've grown their team i think they're now up to about eight people and they are doing tremendously well the important thing here is i said to them please take time to find the right people for the right position in your business and this is not a decision that we need to um, um, make quick. Um, we've got to think about it. We've got to think about the right type of profile, the, right, the values that needs to be aligned. So they took my advice and they found some amazing people. These individuals have since um, developed themselves as leaders in various functions of the business. One specific person is now heading the marketing and sales. Another person, a high impact person that they recruit is now heading operations and the day-to-day -day logistics and everything that needs to happen around that. And they've done some amazing recruitment, getting some fantastic individuals on the marketing and design capability of the company. So you can see immediately the relief, oh my gosh, I have to do all the thinking. I don't need to be doing all the creating. I don't need to fret and worry and lose sleep over whether the product is going to be distributed seamlessly without a problem. So the relief and the moment they put this high value team in place, all self leaders, that gave them, that's giving them day to day freedom of time so they can become far more strategic and they don't have to be so operational. Some results uh, which, have, which we've measured as a result of them growing in their leadership and in leading their team, their confidence has grown, amazing. And they now believe that they are um, absolutely capable of taking this business onto a global scale. They are doing that already. We looked at the numbers only in this week. They've seen and experienced some immense exponential growth. I'm talking 200% growth April this year compared to April last year. 200% growth in sales. It's astronomical. The year to uh, a year to date, a first quarter results, 300% improvement. This period, March. Uh, what's it, uh, February, March, April, compared to last year, February, uh, March, April. 300% improvement. 
They have become a preferred uh, employee or place of work. People are actually now noticing and queuing up in front of their door, wanting opportunities to come and work for them and join them. So how different is that from many of us that are struggling to get the right people? So, um, you know, people are actually queuing up to come and work for them. That's so amazing. And they've also um, already been expanding onto markets. They are uh, in the UK, they're opening up in the Middle East. And it's just amazing to see this, these two young entrepreneurs just pushing their own bar and making things happen. They are definitely building a significant profitable business. And I do believe one of the most significant differentiating factors is the fact that they've developed their own leadership. And they're intentional, they've got a plan, they are highly inspirational, they keep things fresh, they are constantly challenging themselves and their team to come up with new ideas. Um, they are completely, have got a complete open mindset. Uh, it's the floor is open to anyone to contribute and come up with ideas and suggestions. It's just amazing to see. Them. They definitely are influential. I mean, they, they are role models and they influence their team themselves. They've got a huge impact in community. It's beautiful to see. And then, of course, the results speak, speak of itself. So, guys, um, I truly believe that leadership is a choice. Um, and for me, to lead with significant significance is an absolute calling. Um, that's just what I believe. Uh, and I hope that I've been able to share some of my passion around this amazing topic with you this morning. Um, I've prepared a reading list. So um, can we just go over to the next slide? There's a reading list for you. Take a screenshot quickly, grab your cameras. And this is just some suggestions around books and resources that you can read on the topic of, of leadership. And says, if you're in an area, okay. And Florence is saying, wow, this is so inspir inspirational or inspiring. Thanks, Florence. Thank you so much for that feedback. The Road Less Super Stupid is an amazing book, uh, uh, quite a quirky topic, uh, a title, but what an amazing book. Um, measure What Matters, a brilliant book on KPIs um, and helping you in, in the area of performance management. Uh, Shoe Dog, brilliant. I don't know who of you have read Shoe Dog. It's the story of Nike, the, you know, the, the, the shoes, the, the trainers. Full Nike being the owner and founder of Shoe Dog. But what I loved about this book is it's such a real account of his struggles and also initially finding others to believe in his dream and, and right through um, his journey being challenged with cash flow. Doesn't that sound real, guys? Um, but yeah, what an amazing, honest uh, account of the life and of, of an entrepreneur. Uh, leaders Eat Last, brilliant book of Sonic about the, you know, if, if a leader eat last, it means that you, you are out there listening and giving your, your team a chance to contribute and not you always being the one speaking and talking, but you've got to go silent and give everyone a chance around the table to contribute and, and, and give their, their five cents and then you can comment. So it's about the ability to listen, but it's also about the ability to inspire. Becoming a person of influence, dare I say more, uh, B2.0, brilliant book by Jim Collins and Bill Lazier. What a fantastic book. And he starts off by a whole, a whole first chapter is all about leadership and putting together the team and then the importance of having a vision and a purpose and rolling that out in a strategic plan for your business. Uh, 20 Reputable uh, laws of leadership, absolutely inspirational. And then, of course, the good old, um, uh, absolute fantastic book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So, uh, next slide. So, this is where you get to tell me uh, what's been your BFO. So, BFO acronym for Blinding Flash of the Obvious. What has been the one or two things that you've realized that you've learned from me this morning? Please drop that in the top, uh, drop box because you know, if, if you can think of something that you've learned and you put it in the drop box, it's there for everyone else to see and they get to learn from you as well. So come on guys, let's get some participation. 
I haven't seen too many questions though. So any questions in the dog box, please. Um, love the third eye influence. Wonderful. And why do you say that? What's the thing about influence that was so fantastic for you? But thank you for that. So come on, guys, blinding flashes of the obvious. Let, let's get some um, feedback here from you guys. What have you learned? What will stay with you? Uh, what would you want to implement? The correct people to partner with. Absolutely, Anne. Um, this is so critical. Spend time to get the right people. Um, and, and those, the, you know, if you, if you start off by finding the right people that align with your passion, that buys into your passion, that buys and, and is fully engaged and, and wants to participate, it just makes life so much easier, right? Um, sorry for the HR guys amongst you guys. I always say take your time to hire and fire fast. So I know that's not too PC, so my apologies for that. But it just shows, you know, it's so much diff more difficult. It takes so much energy when you don't get the right people on board. Ndombi, I definitely need to do a SWOT analysis on myself. Absolutely. Daryl, my BFO, is the power of your own passionate communication. Absolutely, Daryl. Um, you know, we, 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 we get to lead from the front and we get to lead by our own example. And we, you know, here's the thing, if I smile to, to myself in the morning, then I already feel energized. So, you know, get to the office, be smiling, um, be ready to take on the day and inspire your team with that passion and energy. Uh, the four eyes, incredible, will imply to my everyday activity. Thank you so much. Uh, BFO, I've learned that leadership is a gifted calling. Oh, wow. Taking it through to my lifelong legacy. How amazing is that? Um, I love that. Well done. Um, because I truly believe it is a calling. Let's see. Question. At what stage of business start is it recommended to have a mission and values Absolutely. Thank you so much. Is it uh, Lee Sui? I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, apologies if I'm not. So absolutely from the beginning. Um, you know, as you get the idea of a potential business, um, say for instance, I want to open up a beauty salon and then to go and sit and then um, to find the purpose for me in this. So what is your calling around having a beauty salon? How do you want to make people feel? What is the lasting effect that you would want to have on your clients or customers that comes to your salon? What are some of the fundamental values that you would like to see displayed and lift? Um, you know, it's, it's in your behavior, the way that you go about doing business. Um, so things like, I always want to be ethical with my customers. I always want to be respectful of my customers because because of them I get to have a business. Things like, um, you know, I would want to surround myself with positive people and having a inspirational positive vibe. So all these things become fundamental to how you start your business. So absolutely right from the beginning. So more BFO, this insight is really building me up. My confidence to my full potential. Thank you, thank you. But that's fantastic. Uh, anyone get the list of the book? I wasn't fast enough. Okay, sorry to be so. Uh, Leanne just told me that um, you guys would be, I think Leanne, I'm right, will have access to the recording. Or if you want, we can go back to that slide. Um, maybe we can go back to that slide. Oh, there we go. There we go. Back to the slide. So there, there, there they are. Daryl says, Lindy, there is some confusion between mission and purpose, but a few companies have both. Do you have a... Daryl, absolutely. Um, can I just put this as simple as possible? For me, it starts with the purpose. Okay, so what is my purpose uh, for myself and my business? So, for instance, in my example, they, they see their purpose to be the preferred, the globally preferred uh, brand in high performance sports apparel. So that's their purpose. The mission is how do we going to go about doing it? So purpose is where we want to go. And your mission is almost like your strategic plan or your tactics or your strategy. In their case, they decided their mission is they're going to see that they are going to use 
various um, uh, income streams. They're going to develop a whole lot of different ways of getting their product to market. The mission statement is to surround themselves with high impact team players that, uh, that they get the opportunity to develop to their field. They are going to be constantly looking to create and be creative and leading from the front with great exciting designs. And they are going to be very aggressive in terms of getting product to market. And they are going to absolutely invest in the best possible system way of doing business. So can you see, so purpose is, you know, I don't care what you call it. You can call it a vision, a purpose, whatever you want to call it, but you've got to have clear intent in terms of the desired future. And the mission statement is then the strategy, the way that we are going to do this. I hope that makes sense, Daryl. Incredible session. Thank you so much for the golden nugget. You're welcome, Miranda. Um, let's just see, uh, Carmen says, refreshing session, thanks Carmen, my biggest takeaway, remember who my team become as a result of my leadership, how amazing is that, it's the absolute best compliment, I don't know how many of you are parents, but you know, to see your children flourish, isn't that just the best testimony of one's parenthood and the investment in our children in terms of time and money and all the effort, is to see them flourish and become people of their full potential. And it's to a team in business. It's exactly the same parallel or metaphor. And the thing uh, around hiring a patient is so crucial. Just went through what she's saying, just went through a recruiting phase. And it's so important not to on your standards, on what you require, want, and need. And I absolutely agree, Carmen. I think thing here is to always keep our own standards in mind you know go to second best you know rather stick it out find the right person that can match you in terms of your expected standard absolutely i think it's tony robbins that says always start by rising your own standards uh roshana as a leader one should have passion absolutely you know and i do believe you know just get out of our own way and um, be less intimidated yourself you know just get out of your own way and let yourself fly in terms of what you think could be possible and yes now I must go because my business uh, I must go I have to grow as fast as my <laughs> fantastic as my kids well done and okay so let me see is there anyone else some more let's just see a last couple of BFOs anyone that wants to put up their hand and say this going to implement. Uh, Stacy said, continuously improving, evolving, and growing within myself first. Absolutely. I can't say that enough. You know, we start with ourselves. My very first thought is you get to lead yourself first with passion, and then you earn the right to really lead as a significant leader lead others so it absolutely starts with self you know the time that you invest in yourself um, to learn uh, to network to to get skills uh, to practice um, you know it's it's vitally important um, you've heard that cheesy saying you you what you learn before you earn or something like that so there we go um, and then I think um, I think we're more or less done I've taken a lot of your time sorry for that took a little bit longer than intended. Um, but I just want to thank you for the gift of your time. Leanne, thank you for the audience. Thanks for staying with me. Uh, and I would love to connect with you guys. Um, my, my contact details will be distributed. And it was, it was such a pleasure. Thank you, Leanne. Oh, thank you so much, Lindy. I know I speak for everyone here when I say what an incredible wealth of information. Let's give Lindy a round of applause, everyone. Let's click those clapping hands there. Um, I know for a fact I couldn't keep up fast enough with all the notes, and I know a lot of you probably feel exactly the same. But fear not, everyone who has registered for this event, we will be sending you the replay. So anything you missed, you can then go back and review. And I would 100% encourage you to do that. Take one of the eyes at a time, go back, listen again to Lindy. So, so that re replay will be available as well as more details uh, from Lindy. Uh, and then 
Now we're moving on to a very exciting part of today's event. And uh, Lindy, I might just uh, put you on the spot a little bit here, but I know as a business coach, as someone who's very experienced in business, we are now going into networking. What would you say of like some of your top tips in terms of, of just networking, of, of you know, growing your business and building relationships through this? I love the question, Leanne. Thank you so much. So for me, um, building relationships and the ability to build a relationship is key to business. Think about it. So in any networking, see that as a gift where you can, what you can use to really make contact with people out there. The most important thing for me in terms of a tip, Leanne, is to have an open mindset. You know, just get out of your own way. Don't be shy. It comes back to believing in who you are as a person and, 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 and to just put yourself out there. Go into the open network with an open mindset. Be available. Ask questions. Be curious. And I think that's the second, you know, I, I want to see that you guys are curious to want to find out who's in the room, what are their business about, how can you guys connect, so bring the energy into the room. So the two tips is be open, go into it with an open mindset, and then, uh, you know, ask the question. questions, be curious, because it's about finding and learning and making, making new friends. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Thank you, Lindy. Um, some more tips. If any of you have attended these sessions before, pop them in the chat. Let's help those newbies out there. Um, some things we've picked up on and is uh, don't hard sell. Don't go into the networking time now, just pushing your product, pushing your product. This is really an opportunity to listen and as a business owner to seek to help others. Um, if you approach networking in that way, you're actually, you, you may not make that instant sale that you desperately want, but you are playing a long game. And that game, that building relationship has rewards that you can't even imagine today. So go in with the attitude of helping others. And if you are not in the industry, if there's nothing you can benefit from it, remember that you can then put them in contact with people that could help them be the bridge between um, two people. I mean, that's a wonderful position to be in. Uh, another one is, and this is just on the practical side, um, when you are in your tables, in your sessions, remember that you can jump between the tables just by double clicking. So you double click and you can jump to a different table. If you wanna find out more about the people at your table, you just click on that little circle of them. They should have their profiles there and you can find out a little bit more about them. Uh, when you are in your session, talking uh, remember the talkers out there don't take up all the time i am a talker and i can very easily fill a lot of time remember to give everyone an opportunity to introduce themselves to speak a little bit and um just use this time i mean entrepreneurial uh the entrepreneurial life can be quite a lonely one use this time to really just connect and to share experiences and also to learn from each other um, and that is it from us today. Um, thank you so much for joining us on behalf of the NSBC. Lindy, we just want to thank you. Absolutely, your passion just shines through, your love of people, um, and just your value of abundance is, is so clear in what you gave today. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who attended today.